This patient education video is one in a series brought to you by the American Academy of Allergy, Asthma, and Immunology. And sponsored through an unrestricted educational grant from UCB Pharma. Where we work, where we live, and where we play can all be distinctively different places from one another. But for people with allergies, these places can have one thing in common, exposure to allergy triggers. If you have allergies, one of the first and most effective ways you can control your symptoms is through environmental controls. An environmental control plan works by reducing your exposure to the substances to which you're allergic, either by direct avoidance to those substances or by eliminating as many of those substances from your home as possible. In both cases, your symptoms will lessen, reducing the need for medications to help you feel better. Of course, you'll need to know what's triggering your allergies, so let's take a look at some common outdoor and indoor allergy triggers. If you're outdoors during certain times of the year and your allergies start to act up, it's probably due to pollen. The most common airborne pollen comes from trees, grasses, and weeds. This pollen fertilizes plants to help them reproduce. Flower pollen is heavy. It relies on scent and the bright color of the flower to attract bees, which helps spread the pollen from plant to plant. However, when people are allergic to pollen, they are usually allergic to the pollen from trees, grasses, and weeds, which is small and relies on wind to scatter it through the air. Another allergen that travels through the air is mold spores. Mold can grow in places where it's shady and damp. Wood piles, soil, rotting vegetation, and leaf piles are common areas for mold. Unfortunately, we breathe the same air that these pollen and mold spores float around in and that can aggravate allergies and asthma. Different plants pollinate at different times of the year. So depending on which pollen you're allergic to, your symptoms might be worse in the early spring, the late spring, or the fall. Where you live can also affect your allergies. Well, there's certainly geographic differences in the pollens and some of the molds that are in the air. Uh, for example, in the upper Midwest where I'm from, we have fairly distinct seasons. In March and April, we have our tree pollen season. May through July, we have our grass season. And in the fall, we have our ragweed season with the molds pretty much throughout and also into the fall. In other parts of the country, for example, in the Pacific uh, Northwest and on California, the grass pollen seasons tend to be much more prolonged. The climate you live in affects when and how often the plants in your area pollinate. That in turn affects the pollen in mold season for your area. This graphic shows how different parts of the country can be affected by different plants at various times of the year. Weather can affect your symptoms as well. During the pollen season, windy days can put more pollen into the air causing your symptoms to become worse, whereas rainy days can help rinse the air of allergens, easing your symptoms. For those areas of the country that have cold weather, winter can provide a time of relief from pollen allergies, since plants are dormant at this time. Keep in mind that you might be allergic to more than one type of pollen and mold, causing you to have symptoms throughout the season. But your symptoms won't necessarily get better if you decide to head indoors. Among the most common indoor allergy triggers are dust mites. Like pollen and mold spores, dust mites are very small and they thrive in certain environments. Dust mites are commonly found in bed mattresses, pillows, sheets, and blankets. You can also find dust mites in other areas of the house, on the floor under a bed, on a shelf full of knickknacks, and on stuffed animals and furniture. 
mold can be found indoors too. Anywhere there's excess moisture or humidity, mold can grow. Common areas include the kitchen, the refrigerator and pantry, bathrooms, tub, tile, shower doors and curtains, basements, any wet area on the walls and floors, and window sills of homes with wood windows. Another source of allergens in the home, and one that is particularly problematic because of our emotional attachment to them, are pets. Many people are allergic to the urine, saliva, or dander of cats, dogs, and other common pets. Cockroach and latex particles may also cause indoor allergies. While some people might be sensitive to just one substance, many people are allergic to many things. So how do we go about determining what substances we're allergic to? The way we identify the substance to which a person has an allergy is usually by some sort of diagnostic testing. Uh, we can get a good idea by their history during the seasons of the year that they may be exposed to kind of look for things, as I mentioned, in the spring, the trees, the late spring, early summer grasses, and the fall ragweed. But we confirm that diagnosis usually by allergy skin testing or occasionally by an in vitro test, such as what's called the RAS test. A skin test involves injecting a small sample of a suspected allergen into your skin. If a reaction occurs, a welt or hive will appear after about 10 minutes. The size of the welt will determine how sensitive you are to that particular substance. RAST testing actually measures the amount of allergen antibodies in your bloodstream, again helping to determine the severity of your allergies. While testing is important, the information you give the doctor regarding your specific symptoms will also aid in the diagnosis and treatment of your allergies. You know what you're allergic to and you know where to find it. Now it's time to do something about it. Your doctor may prescribe medications for you to take to help control your symptoms and he may recommend allergy shots for long-term control. However, one of the first things that you can do, and one of the most effective, is to alter your environment to reduce your exposure to the things that you're allergic to. As far as environmental controls are concerned in the treatment of allergies and asthma, I think they're a very fundamental part of our treatment. Obviously, if you can avoid the exposure, that uh, avoids the problem of symptoms and need for medications. So that should really be the foundation of our treatment is minimizing exposure where possible. When trying to deal with the outside environment, it's pretty difficult. Um, if you have pollen allergies, particularly if you're going outdoors, you're going to be exposed. Now, if you're doing certain activities, like mowing the yard, for example, you may wear a face mask to protect yourself at that point. The other thing, if you're driving in your car and you have air conditioning, you can roll the windows up to keep that pollen on the outside. It's very difficult to try to avoid the exposure. So often, it's necessary to pre-medicate before going out into those environments to prevent the symptoms from occurring. Uh, maybe using some sort of nasal sprays, taking an antihistamine, uh, perhaps using inhalers prior to going outside uh, when you have problems with the outdoor environment. Again, knowing what you're allergic to and when the pollen and mold seasons peak will help you alter the way in which you do things outside. In the worst of cases, with the worst of allergies, you might have to stay inside more. But what about those indoor allergens? In terms of being able to control the environment, uh, most of the effort is directed at the indoor environment because, again, that's the source of many problems. Uh, you can do very simple things, uh, certainly starting, as I mentioned, in the bedroom with covering the mattress, the pillowcases, cleaning the bedding frequently, washing it in high, hot water. Um, removing carpeting is also important because that's again a good source for dust mite exposure. The bedroom is important not only because we spend a great deal of time there but our noses and mouths come into contact with the bedding increasing our chances of inhaling dust mite allergen. Of course keeping the rest of the house clean is important as well. To control mold use a dehumidifier in damp areas. Vent the bathroom and kitchen when in use and when cleaning these areas, use a product designed to kill mold and mildew. To keep outdoor allergens out, close the windows and use the air conditioning. 
This not only filters the air, but also controls humidity, which helps control mold and dust mite growth. People with severe allergies, and especially asthma, should not own pets with fur. Alternative pets without fur should be considered. An environmental control plan should be a part of everyone's attempt to control their allergies. After all, if you can avoid the trigger, you avoid symptoms, you feel better, and you avoid the need for medications. So be sure to talk to your allergist to identify your triggers and decide on the best way to manage them. That way, indoors and out, you can enjoy every season of the year. For more information, please call the American Academy of Allergy, Asthma, and Immunology at 1-800-822-2762. Or visit our website at www.aaaai.org. Thank <laughs> you.